we just announced a new product called Astra, which is Creative Upscaler. This is Manji from Topaz Labs, announcing Astra, their new creative upscaling tool that doesn't just make videos bigger, it reimagines the video itself. We have a creative model which will start imagining and adding more details that was not there in the original footage. You can do 4K as well as you can do 2X, 4X, 8X slow-mo. In the future, we believe that there will be a reason why you want to do like post-generation work. From AI on the lot, and VP land. This is Inside the AI Studio. Manji, nice to meet you. Yeah, likewise. So uh, yeah, just give me kind of a brief background for people not familiar with Topaz. Yeah, so Topaz has actually been around for 20 years and we got into AI quite early. So uh, in 2018, we uh, started, you know, uh, releasing our AI art products. So Topaz has a variety of products, right? We have photo AI, gigapixel, video AI, mostly focusing on professional creators. So this year has been quite exciting because we launched this new uh, diffusion model called Starlight and that was last February. So I've been focusing on Starlight and specifically for AI creatives. And we just announced a new product called Astra, which is a creative upscaler. Okay, and so going with Starlight, and how does the Diffusion Upscaler compare to like what the AI upscalers were traditionally doing? Yeah, so if you look at Topaz Video AI, there's multiple models in it. Mm -hmm. They are GAN-based uh, models. So Starlight is our first, uh, and actually the first Diffusion-based model for video restoration uh, use cases. Okay, and then the so yeah, I yeah, ask, uh, you know, I don't think people would want to hear like a technical. No, answer. but I guess so like, when I I ask our creatives, right? Like, yeah, do you see them a different? They say yes, and why? So the answer is like here's a typical, like very common response I hear is like Starlight is almost like imagining and recreating the pixel. Mm -hmm. The intent of Starlight is actually respect the original details. Mm -hmm. So it's the, hence the restoration. Yeah. Right? Now we have a creative model which will start imagining and adding more details that was not there in the original footage. Mm -hmm. So this is great for, you know, very degraded low quality. If you don't care about like people's face or like sticking to the original, that the creative model is great for that. Okay. And is that Astra? Astra is the name of a product. Yeah. And then there are multiple models in it. So okay. we have Astra has like, okay, there, there are two main enhancement or upscaling mode, right? There's a precise, which is, you know, like stick to the original details. And then there's a creative version. Creative is like starlight, but more uh, imaginative. So like it could interpret yes. the low res base image in different Directions. So output quality uh, resolution is uh, 4K. You can do 4K as well as you can do frame interpolation if you want to go from 24 FPS to 90. Mm, like a super yeah. slow-mo Yeah, shot. and you can do like uh, 2X, 4X, 8X slow-mo. Yeah. Looking at the filmmaking process of like Gen AI work, it's like been like, okay, you know, we got to generate the clips and then we have to up -res them with Topaz. Do you feel like that's... I'm just thinking it's like, okay, that's a step right now. But I mean, is it easier or like less compute to operate in that space with the upresing, or will eventually the generative models just start spitting out 4K videos? Yeah, that's a great question. Today, I think if you want to generate it in 4K, there's just like a lot of challenges from how much compute it will require. And I think that it, that could be one of the reasons why. And a lot of people ask, is that going to be the case? Uh, Honestly, like five years from now, I don't know. But I'm pretty sure that it's not the resolution. So like going from 720 pixel to 4K is like one of the reasons why people come to Topaz. Other reason is fidelity. Mm -hmm. right? It's not about just like going, uh, it's also adding that details, like making the quality pop out sharper, you know, that look. In the future, we believe that there will be a reason why you want to do like post-generation work right because uh i really believe that the creatives will figure out a way to go the extra mile if you think about the counterfactual right i don't think like you put in a prompt something comes out you're like 
that's it. Perfect. You know, like there's nothing I can do with it. Like, I think there will be a way, it may not be the upscaling, the resolution, it could be something else, right? So I think that is where we come in and that's where we, our job is to understand what creatives are trying to do and what is really their problem. Start with like, oh, you have all these models, they generate output and creatives have a very specific thing in mind. Um, so it's our job to understand their intent and be helpful to build tools that help them. Do you see other applications for um, outside of upscaling uh, generative video clips? Like on, I, I found Topaz, you know, years ago looking because we were working uh, on documentaries and archival material. And it was, you know, with the uh, previous models you we were talking about, it's like a lot of yeah. dial sliding and figuring out what worked best to like upscale yeah. it. But so do you see these applying to uh, those use cases as well? Yes. The fusion models? In fact, that when we first launched research preview of Starlight, we were focusing on restoration. Whether that is an archival footage, people were like, okay, there's just so much World War II documentary. We also thought that, you know, home videos, we all have those videos from like, you know, 80s, early 2000s, uh, and that, that could be like more of a consumer use case. So whenever there's a video that is valuable to people, uh, even something filmed on an iPhone 4, right? That was like a special moment, you know, someone's graduation. Whatever that reason is, that's the use case. Yeah. And uh, especially if you're like a creative working on something and you have like one footage and it's just not, the quality is not there. It, it's not an AI generated video, but you want that to be a uh, good quality. More stick fidelity. To, exactly. Yeah. That's where the starlight will be perfect. Yeah. Which, which you can use Astra. There's a precise... Uh, upscale, it will it will improve the quality. Just to clarify, the two different models, complete Astra and Starlight. Yes. So, what would as we're clarifying, what would the di like applications or use cases, the different use cases be? Yeah. Uh, between the two, it really depends on what project you're working on. I think creatives want to test out. The, it's not like they go in with like this is my setting. I will exactly know which of the two. So. Um, if you are pretty happy with the result of your, let's say, video, it could be a AI generated video, right? And you just want it to stick to that exact details. That's when you would use precise mode, precise enhancement, right? But we also have a preview option where you can just test out different variations to figure out, okay, for this one, I really like that, uh, like a little bit of creativity. So you can kind of play around to see which one. I don't think creatives know exactly which one will come out. It's like, it's kind of like surprise, you know, they want to see yeah, it. part of the generative yeah. space. And I think Anyways. that's the same thing with other tools, like you have controls and you want to see what output you prefer, right? And when you see the difference and, and then you kind of know, okay, this is, and I don't think it's like one, you know, type of creatives or one type of use cases will always use. I don't think that would be the case. Yeah. Okay. How uh, is the compute working? Because I know with Starlight, there was the cloud version, but then there was like a Starlight light that can run locally. Is that yeah. accurate? Okay. So uh, the original Starlight model is quite large. And in the last three months, our team made that model four times faster and uh, costs three times less. And we have another model called Starlight Mini, which is which is on uh, uh, Video AI 7. So our users can run it on their local machine. For Astra, we have the Starlight as well as the creative model, which are still quite large. So it's all cloud-based. Okay. Uh, and then I guess just credit system or... Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. We're here, AI on the lot. What's been your impression? What have you seen uh, around the event? Genuinely super exciting. I, I think generally, like, I mean, we, we understand what's happening, but specifically for us, it was just nice to meet with creatives that uh, I've been talking to. So like, I know them and I see their work, but it's just different when I see them in person. Right, yeah. And we actually invited them to uh, do an interview. So we actually got a studio yeah. and we're calling it the Spotlight On and, you know, the studios, right? So we talked to, you know, Grail Studios, Massive Studios, Jenny Studios, 
And the, the whole focus is like to really put a spotlight on them. So the biggest highlight for us yeah. is meet them. Yeah. And they're the end users of the tools that we build. And I think it's like really like when we talk about like, oh, this feature does that, but it's really what people want to see is like, show me what's, what's the magic, right? So we wanted to do that is like show the end result and then tell you a story. It's kind of like you, when you go to a gallery, what's more interesting is the curation, right? When you just see like a photo of the nice painting, it's not enough. You want to hear the story, how it was made, what is it, what the artist was and thinking. All paragraph that. card on the side. Yeah. Exactly. It's like those kind of content is all over, you know, LinkedIn, you see an X and when someone creates something awesome and they, you, you see the post, they see their workflow tool stack, like what was the context, right? So we try to do that and our CEO, Eric was also here. So we, we, we had l uh, fun. Yeah. That was reminded me because, um, we talked to Max at, uh, Jenny. And uh, he was talking about how they were creating a, a spot for a TV documentary and it was getting bounced back because from QC because of the kind of blurriness. And then they ran yes. it through Topaz and yeah. sharpened everything, yeah. uh, added a lot more detail and uh, was fine and good to go. Yeah, absolutely. And we, it's, it's great to hear, you know, uh, stories like that, how our tool is being used. And Where can uh, people find out more uh, about you and about uh, the launch with uh, Astra? They could go to astra.app uh we will launch it uh with limited like a beta okay is it going to be a standalone product separate from yes uh, video ai yes okay. it will be uh, like web-based yeah like web-based so if someone wants wants to use it they will go to astra.app okay and uh they can sign up on early access uh, waitlist and then we would start onboarding people and so would this be web app, upload your video clip to upscale and yes. then you get your, so very stream because I use Topaz, VOA and so it's a bit, uh, Yeah. So it has it's a lot not of, a desktop app. Yeah. Okay. It's not it has like a lot something you download and, can, and yeah. yeah. So it's pretty so, much you go in, uh, you can use it immediately. Uh, you get some free credits, uh, to start okay, with, so like try it out. Yeah. Yeah. Play around with it. Okay, cool. So astra.app. Yeah. Astra.app. All right, cool. Well, thank you so much. Appreciate yeah, it. Thank you.